Hello everyone and welcome to The Trader's Grid. I am the president and founder, Randy Alexander, and I am here today to give you a course on candlesticks and the foundation of candlestick patterns and how important they are to trading. There is no such thing as analyzing the charts without understanding the candlestick patterns. The candlestick patterns are the charts. And so this is going to be one of my longest presentations for you all because candlestick patterns are just that deep and I love them so much. So I'm going to give you everything that I got when it comes to candlestick patterns. So we're not going to waste any time and we're going to get right into it. Before I start, we are, I am going to mention that this was a course that I had broken up into smaller mini courses. So I'm going to wrap it all up in one as we go through the slides and you guys can take notes as you need. And of course, during our live day trading class, in order to ask me any questions you may have regarding any of the course content. So let's get started. All right, first up, we're going to look at what it candlestick is. And then we're going to take a look at some of the most common patterns that we find in the market. An engulfing bar candlestick, a Haramni pattern, tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms, doji candlestick patterns, and the morning and evening star. These are like our pivotal candlestick patterns that we can actually use to take to set entry orders and stop losses. So let's first start with what is a candlestick. A candlestick has three components, a candle's body, a wick or shadow, depending on what trader you're speaking to, and the candle color. The candle body represents the open and close of, pri of the price of an asset. So for instance here, as we look at the bearish candle, price opens here at the top and closes down below where it opens, meaning that price has dropped, and that is a bearish candle. The inverse will be for a bullish candle, where price opened here at the bottom and price ran up all day and closed at the top above its opening, which means it's a bullish candle. The candle wick, or the shadow, generally has, uh, each candle generally has two wicks. The wick represents the high and the low of the price for that day or given period, depending on which time frame you're using on your chart. The upper wick stands for the peak, meaning the highest that price reached that day or for that time level. Or in the lower wick stands for the lowest point touched by price for that day or whichever time frame you're looking at. For this example, we're going to keep it on daily candles. And I'm going to reference the daily. The candle color often represents the direction of price movement. Green or a white body suggests that price increased and red or a black body suggests that price decreased. Please note that you can change your color stick patterns on your chart if you do not want to be um, biased by the, the color. Sometimes some traders turn their colors off so therefore they can look at the pattern as a whole and not focus on the actual color of which way the candle went for that day. The first candlestick pattern we're going to go over is the engulfing bar candlestick. There is a bullish and a bearish of each of these candlestick patterns. And the engulfing pattern is basically one candle engulfing the other candle. So as you see here in the bullish example, we have a smaller red candle that was engulfed by a larger green candle, signaling a potential, signaling a potential bullish move that will be next. We will need to wait for confirmation for this next third candle in order to confirm if this is an actual bullish engulfing pattern signaling a bull, um, a potential bull run next. The inverse is a bearish engulfing candle where you see we have a smaller green candle being engulfed by a larger red candle signaling that price may come downward next. Again, we would need to wait for confirmation to confirm if this third candle is going to come down. But overall, this will be a signal to potentially get into some puts or short. While the bullish engulfing candle will be a signal to enter long or buy calls. The Haramni pattern. Haramni is Japanese for pregnant. So for all my mamas out there who understand what it's like to be pregnant because I am a mother myself. This is what this means. So in this bullish pattern, you see that we have a long body candle with a short one. And the smaller candle is completely inside the longer one, including the wicks. That's the key with the harami, right? Because if you're a mother, 
your baby doesn't have its arms sticking out the top or the bottom of you while it's inside of your womb, correct? So therefore, to be an actual bullish or bearish Haramni, the smaller candle and its wicks need to be with inside the body of the larger candle. Depending on the color will depend on if we're going bullish or bearish. And it's the color of the baby. So we would say this is the mother candle, the long candle, and this is the baby. Haramni patterns can come in various ways. Here in this example, you see that in down here is a bullish Haramni. The baby is small, but it's towards the bottom of the candle. But it is, in fact, all encompassed within the larger candle, the mom. And then the bearish Haramni, in this example, is more like a doji candle, right? The baby is very, very small. Doji meaning not having much body at all. But again, it is still within the body of the larger mommy candle. And this will be a reversal going in the other way, as you can see. So price came up after the Haramni appeared. And then price came down after the bearish Haramni appeared. Next, we're going to look at tweezer candles, tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms, or matching lows, matching highs. These usually signal a reversal, but sometimes can also be fake, considered like a fake out, and cause consolidation. So a bullish tweezer bottom is going to have the same lows, where two candles are going to bottom out showing that there is a level of support down here and price will most likely continue up because price tried to breach down and could not break the support level and continue to rise. The inverse is the bearish pattern where you have two candlesticks that are going to have the same highs. These same highs can match by bodies and or wicks. It just depends on how they appear in the chart. But usually the bodies is the most confirmed way to look for these particular patterns. And in this case, price is telling you that we tried to go up. We hit a level of resistance. We could not break that level of resistance two times and price may most likely will be coming down. Next up, doji. The doji candlesticks have various different forms and shapes as they can form. But overall, they have very, very small bodies. That's the best way to sum up a doji candle. We have the common doji that looks like a plus sign, which means that you have hardly any body and equal wicks on both sides. You have a long legged doji, which means there's hardly any body in the middle and longer wicks on both sides. A gravestone candle is usually signaling a potential bearish pattern, meaning that price was rejected from the top by the wick and came tumbling down and price kind of leveled out a level of support as well and there was hardly any wick at the bottom. The dragonfly is usually a bullish pattern, and they be careful with dojis though, and don't confirm either direction, but the dragonfly uh, will be a rejection from the bottom, seemingly price will come back up, and then we had hardly any wick on the other side. Again, I'm saying be careful because a lot of times dojis can come up and be potential fakes. They don't really give a strong indication of which way price is going, it's usually telling you that price is confused and not sure where it wants to go next. Morning star versus the evening star. A morning star is going to be your bullish pattern. So price that was coming down, price created a doji or a pen of some sort and decided whether which way it wanted to go next. So this type, the dojis usually kind of show a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. Once they figure out who wins, price will take off in that direction. So in the morning star, the bulls win, and in the evening star, the bears win. And these candlestick patterns show up very, very often. In order for it to be a confirmed pattern, again, we always want to wait for confirmation of the next candlestick. More candlesticks and how to trade them. So now we're getting into some fanciful combinations where we have the bullish versus bearish pin bars which are basically like the morning and evening stars, but they're a little bit stronger because you have a pen or a doji candle that shows significant resistance or excuse me, significant rejection from either the top or the bottom if it bounced off a resistance level at the top or if it bounced off a support level at the bottom. These will most likely confirm 
a reversal pattern is in and price is going to reverse in the opposite direction in the near future again we always 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 want to wait for confirmation but overall these are usually the stronger signal that price is going to change direction for us how to determine whether a pin bar is worth trading first the pin bar form on a bigger time frame such as the four hour or the daily time frame should be taken into consideration any of these patterns that you see on a larger time frame meaning daily weekly monthly they usually have a stronger confluence that price will actually go in that direction when you see these patterns on a smaller time frame for instance the five minute the three minute the one minute they usually don't hold up very long and so it can easily go up for maybe two more candlestick patterns and then turn back around on you so we want to confirm that wh what time frame are we spotting this particular pattern the second criteria is a pin bar formed in line with direction of the market is more powerful than one which is formed against the trend. And I will show you example of this in the next slide. If you can identify a clear trend, that means you know who is in control of the market. So in this next slide, as you see, we have a pin that's being rejected from the bottom support and price is continuing up. Then we get kind of a fake out here where two pins are identified, but they're going against the trend because they didn't really break the bottom. Our next pin bar still holds price up and it continues to go up. Again, you have to be careful, like I said before, because pins are, are in fact dojis and you have to be sure that they're not going, um, that they're actually reversing price or holding price. Sometimes they just show up as indecision and there's nothing really to do about them. The psychology behind the pin bar candle formation. Pin bars are formed with price when prices are rejected. The most important areas to watch when trading pin bars are major key levels such as support and resistance, supply and demand zones, and moving averages, if you use them. If the rejection was near the support level, this was an obvious indication that the bulls are more powerful and they are willing to push the market upwards. If the candlestick occurs near the resistance level, it indicates that the bears reject price and prevent the bulls from breaking this level. Trading with the trend, because we also always, 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 the trend is our friend, so we want to trade with the trend. Pin bars that occur in trending markets offer good trading opportunities with high risk reward ratio. Start by identifying a clear uptrend or downtrend, and you wait for a pin bar to occur after a pullback to a support or resistance level. The formation of the pin bar indicates the end of the retracement move and the beginning of the impulsive move at the resistance level in a downward trend. This is a downward trend example. A high quality setup trade is the pin bar is well formed and it is in line with the direction of the market. The rejection occurred at a major key level which represents the hot point in the market. The risk to reward is good and it's usually worth trading. Another criteria to know your high quality setup, can you use 21 day moving average to act as a dynamic support or resistance level when drawing support and resistance can be difficult. This is one thing that you can use. I don't always use moving averages. I really base a lot of my trades off of fair value gaps and order blocks. So if the pin also aligns with that, that can be a high quality setup as well. Entering and exiting a trade. The aggressive entry option. If you're an aggressive trader or a little more impulsive and risky, you're gonna enter the market immediately after the pin bar closes without waiting for confirmation. This strategy helps you catch the beginning of the move. Three elements to take the trade, the trend, the level, and the signal. A conservative option is to enter the market after 50% of the range of the bar retracement. This strategy sometimes will work and gives you more than five to one risk to reward ratio. And sometimes the market will leave without you. So sometimes waiting for that move, waiting for the confirmation before entering the trade, price can come to start moving upwards, say in a bullish situation, very quickly after the pin bar occurs. If that's the case, I do not recommend chasing price to enter the trade. We always, always, always want to trade with confluence. Trading with confluence, 
Confluence happens when many technical indicators generate the same signal. Trading with Confluence is a must because it will help you focus on the quality setups rather than the quantity and will enhance your trading performance tremendously. Confluence means combination or conjunction in which two or more things join or come together. Factors of a confluence that you can trade with are the trend. If the trend is going in that direction, then you can help take the trade. Support and resistance levels. Is price leaving a current area of support or resistance? Moving averages. Again, I don't always use them, but I do understand them. So you can use a technical trading tool indicator called simple moving averages or exponential moving averages to help you further define your levels of support and resistance and along with the trend that will help you confirm confluence of the trade. Two other factors of confluence are the Fibonacci retracement tool, which I do have another video um, that you guys can check out on understanding how to use the Fibonacci retracement tool. And at the 61 to 50% Fibonacci re that, that the Fibonacci retraces to, you will find the most powerful areas of the market. And this is true. And again, I can go over that in more detail in that course. You can also use trend lines. Again, I don't use a lot of trend lines, but I do understand them. And it really comes down to how you draw them. Drawing trend lines on your chart gives an idea about the market direction and helps you find the most important reversal points in the market. Now let's continue to more, can more complex candlestick patterns that I believe traders should know. Dark cloud cover. The dark cloud cover pattern is a two stick candlestick pattern. It's usually a bear, bearish reversal pattern where the candle, the down candle opens above the previous up candle, then closes below the midpoint of the up candle. Most useful if it occurs in an overall price rise, characteristics of, will be a long real body with relatively short or non-existent shadows. The inverse of this pattern is the piercing bullish reversal, piercing line, which is a bullish reversal pattern. So this is a dark cloud cover. The piercing line is just really the same pattern going the opposite direction, and it signals a bullish reversal. Another more complex candlestick pattern is called the bullish Hakaki candlestick pattern. Please note that most of these candlestick patterns are derived from the Japanese candlestick Bible, so they're Japanese names in nature. A complex candle pattern is the bullish Hikaki is a complex candle pattern said to forecast a move in the opposite direction. The first two candles are declining pattern, such as a Harami. The third candle closes below the low of the second candle. The next one or more candles will drift below the third candle and may begin reverse direction. The final candle will close above the high of the second candle and comes from the Japanese word hook, catch, or insure. Uh, is where the term Hakaki comes from. So as you see here, here's the Harami pattern. Price has started to come down again, but then a larger candle comes up and breaks the neckline, and then price continues up. Another complex candlestick pattern, it's a five candle reversal pattern. It's called the ladder top. The top is followed by a sharp drop. The bottom is followed by a sharp increase. The first candle and the third candles have long green candle bodies that each point that each open and close below or above the previous candle, depending on the current market direction. The fourth candle has the same color and the previous three candles with a short body and long upper wick. The fifth candle is in the opposite color of the previous four candles with an open above the real body of the previous candle. Limitation to this pattern that is that it's very rare. It can be a poor indication of price, and it's a 50-50 chance whether price will reverse, continue, reverse or continue, the pattern can cover a lot of price area because it takes up so many candles. There's another three candlestick formation called the upside Tasuki gap. This is a, a bullish pattern. The first candle is large with a defined trend. The second candle is another candle of the same color of the previous candle with the opening price that has gapped above or below the close of the previous candle. The third candle is of the opposite color that partially closes the gap between the first two candles. The third candle indicates a pause in the trend and the bears or bulls attempt to reverse price but cannot close the gap. 
between the first and second candle. The fact that it cannot close the gap suggests that the trend will likely to continue. You can have an upside to Sasuki gap, or you can have a downside to Suki gap. Another three candlestick formation is called the bullish unique three river, three river bottom. If price moves higher after the pattern, then it's a reversal. If the price moves lower after the pattern, then the trend continues. Characteristics. There's usually a long trend. A hammer, a hammer, which is like a pen formation type of candle, it's a single candle formation that makes a new high or low. Then you will have a small real body candle that stays within the range of the hammer. This is the hammer, meaning no wick to the upside. You can have an inverted hammer, meaning there'll be no wick on the bottom. This smaller real body candle shows up and it stays within the hammer. The first candle shows who has current control of the market, while the hammer and the second candle show, suggest weakening of that control, while the third candle shows signs of stability and the potential for a stronger move. Another candlestick pattern is called the advanced block. It's a three candle bearish setup that is considered a reversal or bullish continuation. Characteristics, the price action of an upward trend or significant bounce within a downtrend. Three green candles appear that have progressively shorter real bodies. The open of the second and the third candle lie within the real body of the previous candle. Upper shadows of the three candles gradually become taller, especially the shadows of the last candle. Concealing Baby Swallow. This is a four line candlestick pattern which appears very rarely and it can be often ignored. The first characteristic is a first red Maributu candle in a downward trend. Maributu means a candle that does not have any wicks. The second candle is another red Maributu that opens within the previous candle body and closes below the previous close and candle price. The third candle is a high wave basic candle with no lower shadows. Candle opens below the prior closing price and upper shadow enters the prior candle's body. Fourth candle is a real body and engulfs the prior candle's body, including the shadows. Here we talk about, here we get more into depth about the modern Butsu candle. It indicates who is relatively in complete control of the market. Most of the time, these candles are large, but they usually lack a lot of wick. The wicks are usually very, very small or non-existent at all to further confirm who is in control of price action at that time of the candle. A three-stick candlestick pattern reversal is called a another three-stick, a three-candlestick pattern is called the bullish stick sandwich. The characteristics of the bullish stick sandwich is the first candle is bearish and continues down. The second candle is bullish and it opens price higher than the first candle, close price. And the third candle is bare again and it closes price, its close price is equal to that of the first candle, equal bottoms here. It resembles a sandwich when plotted on a chart. Both candles on either side have a large trading range than the middle candle. It's a possible short-term trend change. Another reversal indicator that I love to trade often and you find very often in on the charts is called a cradle pattern. It looks legit like cradle. It begins with the same visual alert found in most candlesticks bottoming signals, a large bearish candle at the bottom of the downtrend. The following day shows candlesticks such as doji spinning tops, which are spinning tops are these dojis that don't have much body. Haramni's hammers or inverted hammers indicating that selling has stopped. So price came down, now selling has stopped and we're just trying to figure out what to do next. If the large dark candle is considered the headboard, the bullish candle becomes the footboard. And so here is the bullish candle that is rising up above and it should close well, above this candle in order to confirm that the bullish trend will continue if this is a bullish cradle. 
Now we're going to move into a few more candlestick patterns that I think everyone should know. We just went over the cradle. So we're going to move over to just a review, actually. The cradle stick, the five most profitable candlesticks patterns that I think traders should know. And there's a few new ones in here. So first up, we have the cradle, which is very, very common. Next up, we have the tweezer tops and the tweezer bottoms. Then after that, we have the dumpling top and the frying pan bottom. It's kind of like a Tatsuki gap, but with a little bit more candles in it. Where price is rising up in the dumpling top. And then we have, a oh, price starts to kind of curve and descend down. And then price gaps down. This gap down further signals that price has reversed and is going to continue trading down. The inverse is the frying pan bottom, where we have price kind of ascending up slowly and then price gaps up and to continue the bullish trend reversal. The next major candlestick pattern I think is very profitable is the J hook. Some may call it a cup and handle. It just depends on where you're getting your resources from. So the J hook shows that price has in, was going up and then did a slight retracement down and then continued back up. There's the trading bell. An uptrend, it usually confirms a continuation of an uptrend. And so basically you would put a stop loss down here um, at, because you see you have a confirmed retracement and then you would enter the trade when price breaks the neckline up here and then continue riding price action up. Another highly profitable candlestick pattern I think it's worth mentioning is the three mountain peaks. It's formed by three tops where price tried to run up and break a level of resistance and failed. And then price kind of turned around and became an overall bearish pattern and is going to come down. The, the reversal of this pattern is called the three river bottom, and that's the bullish pattern when price hits the bottom three times and then is going to continue up. A very common pattern that we love to trade is called the double bottom or the double top. We'll focus on the double bottom in this particular scenario. A double bottom is a change in trend and a momentum reversal from a prior leading price action. It looks like the letter W. It describes a drop of a security or index, a rebound, another drop to the same level. So it describes as a drop, a rebound, and then another drop to the same level as its original drop, and finally another rebound that may have a uh, that may become an uptrend. The the twice touch low is now considered a significant level of support. Double bottoms occur relatively often and on different time frames. Again, the larger the time frame, the stronger the W. A five minute W is not going to be as strong as a daily W. A daily double bottom may indicate a longer term reversal or a shift in trend, while an hourly double bottom may signal only a brief pause. Next patterns we want to look at, these are more combination patterns, are considered flag patterns. In a flag pattern, you're going to have the preceding trend, the consolidation channel, a volume pattern, a breakout, and then a confirmation where price moves in the same direction as a breakout. If the lines converge, the, the patterns are referred to as a wedge or a pennant pattern. These patterns are among the most reliable continuation patterns that traders use because they generate a setup for entering and exiting trend, for entering an existing trend that is ready to continue. So flag patterns are usually a pattern that lets you know that price is going to continue in the direction of the trend that it was going, but it took a brief pause. Let's look at a few examples. We have what is an overall flag pattern? It's a technical analysis chart price characterized by a sharp counter trend succeeding a short lived trend. It's accompanied by representative volume indicators as well as price action. Flag patterns signify 
trend reversal, or breakouts after a period of consolidation. The pattern typically consists of between 5 and 25 price bars. Flag patterns can, either, can be either upward trending or downward trending. The bottom of the flag should not exceed the midpoint of the flagpole that preceded it. So we have a bull flag where price is coming up, then consolidated, then continued up. The pennant is where price kind of squeezed together before breaking out and continuing up. And of course, we have the inverses bear pattern of the same thing. Bullish flag formations are continuation patterns. They are called bull flags because the pattern resembles a flagpole. This will be your flagpole. This is your flag. And then price breaks out and continues. The flag can be horizontal, rectangle, but it also angles down from the prevailing trend. So it gives a little bit of a retracement before coming back up. The psychology behind the flag patterns is despite the strong vertical rally, the stock refuses to drop. The breakout from the flag often results in a powerful move higher, measuring the length of the flag, the prior flag hole. Bull flags are typically begin to surface in conjunction with a new market rally. And how do we trade the flag patterns? Well, you would take an entry. Your entry, even though the flag suggests a continuation or a current trend, it is prudent to wait for the initial breakout to avoid a false signal. Traders typically enter after price has broken and closed above the upper parallel trend line. The stop loss can be typically placed below the level of consolidation. Your take profit is usually going to be a target that is going to be above um, when price breaks out at the next level of resistance. Your take profit can look like a previous order block that needs to be retested or something of that matter that's drawing price to it. And that is all for this particular course on flags, I mean on candlestick patterns. We went through pretty much all the types of candlestick patterns that you can come across in the market. I do recommend studying these using some flashcards um, or anything else that can help you put some of these candlestick patterns to memory. So therefore, when you're actively live day trading, it becomes very, very easy for you and you don't have to think about it and you can just enter the trade accordingly based on the patterns that you see. Again, we use these patterns in conjunction with order blocks and fair value gaps to help further confirm where price is going. Thank you all so much for this course and we'll see you next time.